live on both Instagram and YouTube so we can talk about what we're doing this weekend. So hopefully that'll work out okay. Platform of your choice. Um, no guests in line tonight, but just want to talk about fishing tomorrow. What's up, Dustin? What's up, Owen? What's up, Logan? Just getting my gear together. Uh, I'm actually going to jump in my neighbor's boat because uh, – my boat's a little sick, so rather than uh, do any additional wear and tear on my boat, I'm going to um, jump in his. And since our kids play together almost every day in the neighborhood, I figure the it's still responsible. So that's that's my plan. So we're probably going to go south of the cities a little bit, maybe down in the Faribault area, pick a lake. There's a lot of lakes down there with big biggins in them, so it should be good. Um, I think they're going to bite tomorrow. I think it'll be good. I don't know what everybody else thinks. So what are what are people tying on? What do they think uh, they're going to be using tomorrow? I think in uh, there's a lot of good options <clears throat> for sure. So, I mean, a little bit of cloud, a little bit of wind, cool weather. I definitely think a jig will be a must-have. <clears throat> and uh, probably some reaction bait. So I definitely, if there's any kind of wood in the water that I'm going to or trees and stuff like that, I think that will be good uh, for jigs. I think otherwise, staging areas, swim jigs, chatter baits, maybe small flat side crank baits, spinner baits. I think all those things will play. Mag draft for sure. I think... Uh, Get a little bit of light. We get a little bit of sun, a little bit of breeze. I definitely think swim baits could be good tomorrow. I definitely, I got my uh, a uh, a dream smasher over there. I'm gonna bring my swim baits tomorrow for sure. I'm still. I really haven't started packing yet, so I need to get my stuff together. Um, so we're just in the boat, hanging out, getting our gear ready. I'm getting my co on. Tomorrow, BSM, I think I'm headed down somewhere in the Faribault area. I don't know, like Cedar, Robards, one of those lakes down there. They're all pretty good. I think you can't really go wrong. So it's probably a big fish that like to eat jigs, and I think it'd be a good place to possibly throw a swim bait early in the year and try to catch a big one. Um. My motor, I don't know. It's got a knock in it, so it's not good. I don't know. I haven't pulled it apart. I don't know if it's like a crankshaft or a piston or what, but I've talked to a few people, and uh, it's not good. So what's going on, Ballin 21? Kyle, we're just uh, talking about what we're going to do this weekend because uh, in Minnesota, this is the first time that statewide you can really fish for bass legally. Um, so that's that's what's up. And we're, uh, I got some tackle that I bought. I've been kind of been thinking about kind of showing off and chatting about and then kind of talking about what we're going to do. Callie in the house. Nice. Uh, I need to get some stuff. Oh. Oh. So I definitely think and I probably want a soft swim made on tomorrow, like a dream smasher. I was thinking about possibly breaking out some huds maybe something like that could be pretty decent tomorrow watching the kids this weekend that is the worst planning i've ever heard in my life brian for sure everything's on the table although i'm going to take jump in somebody else's boat so i literally can't bring everything tomorrow but uh clear lake is opening to locals only are you not a local on clear lake ballin So yeah, I'm thinking uh, maybe these little guys tomorrow. I definitely want to throw some swim baits tomorrow just to keep the fish honest uh, for sure. Uh, so I'm thinking a couple paddle tails, some soft stuff. I don't have any mag grass, but stuff in that vein. Um, and then I definitely want to try. I'm definitely, I need to make a few casts uh, with some glides tomorrow for sure. So uh, whether that's a river to sea like one of these bad boys. 
or whether the new ones, which I'm going to jump, get out of the box anyways. Don't get too hyped up on Owing Weekend. It's a long summer. Yeah, but it's been an even longer winter, so I will get hyped up. So, <laughs> so definitely want to throw a glide, whether it's one of these smaller river to seas uh, tomorrow or one of these other ones I'm going to show you out of a box here in a second. I hope I can see this little guy might be juicy tomorrow. This uh, shell cracker, G2. Could be spicy tomorrow. 168 all day. Yeah, that could be. I got some new ones though. Should we should we look at some of the new ones I got? Uh, what's up, PB Dad? Let's uh, let's talk about some of the stuff. I really haven't talked about some of the, the stuff that I've invested in for spring. So uh, let's see what we got in here. So we got to unpack this one, the Arashi and Okiwawa Masu. Kind of a loud color, but I think uh, a lot of people talk pretty positive about this color. Um, so I should probably just get this thing open. Let's take a look at it. Ugh. It's got to go in the box for tomorrow. I ain't going to bring it in the package. So this is the first one of these I got. Um, it comes with a replacement tail. I didn't know about that. So let's get in this thing and look at it a little closer. Shell cracker, yeah, for sure, Kyle. Did I already drop the tail? Tail down. Oh, tail's still in the blister. All right. Set that there. We don't forget about that. So there's the Arashi for those that haven't seen it. Um, it does have the rotating hook hanger, so that's pretty sweet, right? That's supposed to be a deal for uh not losing fish that the, the fact that the trebles can spin 360 no binding it comes with a pretty nice solid clip on it a snap um soft tail with a pin they send you one replacement I don't know, i'm pretty jacked about that i like the eyes on it. it's got some nice mean eyes on it let's compare it to the 168 what are the water temps running up here right now? I think they're in the upper 50s, maybe touching 60s. Who's been out? Like uh, anybody in the Insta chat or on uh, YouTube that's been out in Minnesota, what are the water temps? I have not been out in two weeks on the Mississippi River. Two weekends ago, it was low to mid 50s. And we haven't been super warm. We haven't been super cold. So I'm guessing we've gradually climbed. Um, but. I don't know, somebody that's been out can maybe, there's a few people on the Insta that maybe have been out. What are people seeing for water temps around like the metro area of Minnesota? So there's the 168 compared to the Arashi. So the Arashi is definitely a little meatier, a little longer. Uh, it's a little bigger in every single dimension, honestly. Um, so Spicer Lake, which is out west, 52 to 56. I'm going to be just south of the city. So my, I think what I was saying is accurate. I would say 55 to 58 tomorrow. And it's going to be a little cooler in the morning, but I expect, uh, you know, it to be around that range for sure. Mid fifties all morning. Last weekend, we've been kind of warm. So yeah, I'd say mid to upper fifties. So, uh, BSM thinks they'll be close to 60 down Fairball. So there could be a few fish spawning down where I'm going. We'll see. I don't know that the lakes, how clear. I've never been on them this early in the year, so I don't know how clear they are. Um, yeah, the glides, not much bigger. You can always go bigger. It's it's It doesn't look way bigger, but it is, you know, not way longer, but it's deeper, it's wider. It's a bigger profile for sure. Um, let's And I have one more that I'm kind of excited about. Let's get that one out. Another glide that I'm excited to try. Some kind of cool packaging. Uh, it's the the antidote glide from Bait Sanity. So it's got this nice cool tube. It comes in a bag. Um, if any of you guys uh, can share this stream or hit the like, that would be awesome while we're on here. Uh, this is my first Bait Sanity bait ever. Uh, it's a resin body, durability, da-da. 
airbrushed paint job. I've heard really good things. It's got great reviews on Tackle Warehouse. It's all Samsung, why I found it. Yes, I do. This, uh, <laughs> the, the phone that you are watching on IG is the phone you found in the river uh, at Monticello. So, yes, I do. It's still kicking. Isn't that amazing how long ago that was? And th thanks again, if I didn't mention that. I did send you some jigs, didn't I? So, there's a clamshell inside my tube for this bait sanity. It comes with the hooks unattached. So, I don't know if that's just so they can fit it in a smaller profile in the packaging, which is kind of smart because, like, if they can reduce their shipping, they can keep their costs down. And then if they don't have the labor of putting the hooks on, then if it's going to save me a buck or two, I'll be happy to put the hooks on myself. Um, so we got to get this, see if we can get this clam open without. Yeah, so you guys should definitely uh, follow Live to Fish Minnesota in there just because he saved my phone one time. It was a true hero. It's actually a pretty good story. Um, I went waiting like right around my birthday, which was right before around Thanksgiving weekend. And I had just gotten a new Samsung phone. It was the S8 Plus at the time. So this was like two years ago, maybe a little more. Uh, and uh, literally less than a week old. And I was waiting in the river. The water was probably like 35, 40 degrees. Um, and <clears throat> I went back to the truck and I, I guess, I, I think I took a picture of a little fish that I caught just because it was like the first fish that I caught in a long time. And, uh, I usually tuck it like in this Velcro pouch on my waders <clears throat> and I don't know if I just missed it, it dropped it, didn't realize it. Um, I went back to the car to like look at the directions of the place that I was going to go and I couldn't find my phone. So I started like backtracking. I looked all around the car. I went through my waders. I went through my tackle bag. I walked back down to the water. I like walked around a little bit uh, with my boots on. I couldn't find it. I got my waders on. I went out and looked a little bit, couldn't find it. I was like, man, this, this sucks. I was just pissed. Lost like a brand new, whatever, six, seven, eight hundred dollar phone at the time. <clears throat> and uh, so I had to reactivate my old S6. Uh, that was about dead, barely kicking. And uh, all of a sudden, I don't know, two days later, I get an Instagram notification. I get a Facebook message. I don't know. I think he like pinged me on just about every social uh, imaginable. But these these guys, uh, Wyatt and uh, the other guy, they saw the blinking light, like the red or blue LED down on their feet in like three feet of water and picked my phone up after sitting in there for two days. And it still had like 7% battery and they were able to figure out without unlocking the phone, just to my notifications, who I was and what my phone was. And they reached out to me, dried it out, fired it up. It's been working for over two years. So there's a testimony to Samsung. If you guys are fishermen for sure. Yeah, Chuck, that's true. I mean, a lot of guys don't keep stock hooks anyway. So um, why, you know, the labor of putting them on, having them take off, people are going to change it. So here's the bait sanity antidote so we'll compare that to the kind of a similar color to the uh but that's also definitely longer than the 168 um but it is a little thinner like it's a similar thinness uh compared to the arashi here like a little bit longer than the arashi but the arashi is definitely thicker so like this has a thinner profile which could be kind of good, I think, because you want the length. I think the flash and the height and the length of the body is what gives you the drawing power because uh, that flash, that water displacement, the shine is going to be really good. But the fact that it's a little thinner isn't really going to affect the drawing power, I don't think, but will potentially help you with hookups and fish actually committing. I don't know. I'm not a swimbait expert, but that sounds good in my head. Um, so yeah, there's the new bait sanity next to the uh, uh, Irashi. So this is a little bit flatter too. So I think this could be really good in our Minnesota waters where we've got a lot of super clear water. I think this flat could be could be a nice option. Still has pretty good brightness and drawing power. And I thought this one wasn't way different than that light trout. This thing's got like a squeak. It's almost like a buzz bait. The hinge is almost squeaky. It's kind of that could be sneaky good. 
Is it lighter? It does feel lighter, but I, this one's got the hooks on it, and this one doesn't have the hook, so it's a little hard for me to say. Um, I could maybe weigh these. I don't remember what the specs were on Tackle Warehouse. I'll definitely put some links down in the replay to both of these baits. Um, it feels lighter, but it might be just because I don't have the hooks on it. Chuck. So, anybody else going anywhere cool tomorrow fishing? So that's the new swim baits I bought. I need to put the hooks on these. I don't have to get my uh, my split rings out. Uh, what else did we get? Let's see. I bought some of these uh, perch color. Um, 10,000 fish Sukoshi bugs as a commitment to the Ned regs. Uh, so I'm definitely looking to throw these on my Bass Tech Weedless Ned heads a little bit this year. Um, so I haven't caught a ton of fish on Ned heads, but I definitely want to do it more. And I just like the looks of these uh, 10,000 fish Sukushi bugs. Anybody else use these that have had success with these? Let me know. Um, kind of compare them to a D bomb here, like, or a Ned bomb. Like they're a little shorter than a Ned bomb, a little thicker body. So just a little different profile um, in the water. I think it could be good. Um, so that's new. The Sukoshi uh, 10,000. Let me know if anybody is uh, rocking those this year. Uh, what else did we get? So let's talk about some other Ned baits while we got the Neds out. I got a couple packs of these Ned Zone uh, worms. Uh, they're three inch Ned Zone, X Zone. I think these look really good. Like I like the looks of these. Uh, just a nice. Uh, Kind of got that bulbous tail on it. I think that's going to create a little movement. Uh, it feels like it's a pretty floaty plastic. I really like this color. It's called, uh, I don't know, 309. But it's kind of like a baby bass with some copper type flex in it, some purple. It looks really good. Uh, I think that uh, could be a clear water killer for sure. We can compare that one to the, uh, the good old Ned Bomb that we just had out. So just like it's similar length, but just got a little bigger profile. You can see there it is next to the, the Ned Bomb. So kind of excited about those. Got them in green pumpkin purple as well. Twenty nine Chicago tonight. Might wait till the afternoon. Chuck says. There's a good looking. Nice natural color, dark brown, some purple cinnamon type flakes in it. Hot Ned Rig Bait says it right on there on the sticker. So there's my new Ned supplies. Um, small leaf. I want to try some of these slammers. This is more for later in the year. I don't really expect to be drop shot in tomorrow. Uh, how do I rig that? The Ned Zone? The Ned Zone is pretty standard. It's just a Ned rig. Sycamore Outdoors wants to know how to rig the Ned rig, so we might as well fire one up. Maybe we'll tie one on for the mouse. So I'll get a 10th ounce Ned head here. I'm going to put it on a, a weedless one because I, I think there'll be some wood in the water in the lakes that I'm going to tomorrow. Um, so basically, Right, you want to basically line that up on the hook about where it's going to come out. Thread that on there. Try to get it nice and straight, get it over that barb. And then you just have basically a tiny, <laughs> what we used to call jig worms in the, uh, or a four inch jig, basically a three inch jig worm in Minnesota. Um, with now it's popular as a Midwest finesse rig or a, uh, a Ned rig, right? So, and that just stands on the bottom and just sits there and just quivers. So that tail just juicy. So 
I've never thrown the net heads. I'm excited. I thought that, that to me, uh, the shape of them just gives me a lot of confidence more than that, the standard TRD, which I have a couple of those. I don't know where those are. Um, I don't think I have them handy. They're probably sitting underneath the laptop. Let's up here. One moment. So yeah, I don't have a TRD, but I just like the shape of these a little more, um, a little more confidence. And, and if you're more confident that you're going to catch them, that's what's really important to me. Like uh, if you've got more confidence in a TRD, if you've got more confidence in the shape of a Ned bomb, if you've got confidence in this, that's what's going to be key. I think for catching fish, honestly. So um All right. What else did we get from the candy store? So I ordered some four inch and some six inch missile baits quiver worms. I do think they just got these at Omnia recently. Um, but I thought this specifically would make a pretty darn good jig worm in Minnesota, a small jig worm. Actually, I think both of these would make really good jig worms. I know they're designed to be on like Tokyo rigs and things like that. And, uh, but I think these will be absolutely killer uh, on regular jig worms instead of like Senkos. I think these baits um, will be juicy. So I picked up a couple packs of these, and I think the way we fish in Minnesota, um, I think these will be good on jig worms. So that's what I'm most excited. And I'm a big fan of this Green Pumpkin Flash, Green Pumpkin Magic. Um, so excited to give these probably not something i'm gonna be throwing this weekend but once those weeds come once we hit post spawn we hit those weed edges these uh these will be legit for sure i'll be super excited like this will be i remember doing a video in june at a local metro like uh, talking about how to beat the post spawn blues now starting jig worms with yum dingers on them and there's no reason these things wouldn't kill uh on those so my last little bit of like so this is the last little bit of egg zone that i'm trying this year I like the looks of these punch craws, the punch Punisher punch craws. Um, so I got one in black and blue and another one in green pumpkin, purple, green. I think these, when we get to be milfoil season, getting that milf life, um, when that grass comes up and we start to get in that flip and punching bite, the heat of that summer, um, these little, they kind of remind me, I think it was a jackal cover craw maybe or something. These are pretty similar. Uh, they should be just perfect. Let me see if I got a hook here just to show you like on a straight shank what we're talking like the size of these compared to mm, four. Let's see what they look like with a four odd hook. Like that four odd hook will sit right in the meat of that bait and there will be nothing butt hook for that fish to get so when we're punching real thick cover and grass this is when i expect this to be a tool in my arsenal so we're probably at least a month or so out maybe two on that but i'm pretty excited about these you know could be flipping a beaver we could be flipping a lot of things um so that's that's what i'm excited about these they they're nice and soft but there seem like there's plenty of meat there to hold a hook especially a flipping hook Derek Mason's from Ankato fishing this weekend. Do you think it's going to be an off the bank pre-spawn deal? Um, I don't think in Mankato. I'm sure you could catch some. I don't know if you mean deep off the bank. I think there'll be fish available on the bank. I think they'll be, especially in Mankato, a little farther south. I think that, I don't think they'll be spawning heavy, but I think they're going to be right on the precipice waiting. So I think you won't have to go very deep, maybe a little offshore. Um, so I would, you know, don't, I don't think you need to drop off to like eight, 10 feet, but I would start at like five and work your way in pretty quick. That's just what I'm thinking. Um, what's up, J Pop from Illinois? We got a couple, couple of fighting Illini on here. Anybody tried these uh, Punisher cars yet? Anybody uh, flip these yet? I mean, I think they'd be good in the pads. I think they'd be good in mats, uh, milfoil edges. So that's a new tackle. 
coming up. Um, what else? Let's look at some things like this. Can play tomorrow. I've got some Arsenal uh, tactical middles in the four and a half inch. So I'd expect these, especially this bluegill color here, to be could be a really nice option on a uh, bladed jig or a chatterbait or a tomorrow. They've got a uh, nice little joint in the body. They're not too big. A small paddle, like definitely for the size, it's a small paddle tail. Let me see if I can pull out something else like that you might be familiar with. Right, let's look at a gambler easy swimmer. Also about a four and a half inch, five inch bait. I mean, they're almost the same length. The, the easy is a little bit bigger but just the size of that paddle tail, which unlike a swim jig or by itself, that big tail could be really good because you're going to want that kick because you want the swim bait to create the action. But on a bladed jig, you almost want something a little more subtle because you want the jig to impart it. And the more tail you have on a bladed jig, the more drag it creates. So it's going to fight the action of the chatterbait and make it run true. So if you think about like, the fletchings on an arrow, if you shoot archery, the more fletchings you have, the, the, the more resistance, the more drag you have, the straighter the arrow will go. So if you want a chatterbait to hunt or have erratic action, um, you actually want something very straight, like a worm or a fluke or something that has a little bit of resistance or not much resistance at all, because that will give your chatterbait or your bladed jig the best opportunity to kick out or do something erratic or that blade to hung because you don't have that drag. Does that make sense? So really think about it like archery. The more the drag, the straighter it goes. The less drag, the better chance it can kick out and do its own thing. So there you go. That's my theory on bladed jigs. And if you want some kind of erratic or hunting action or you want it to pop off weeds and grass and deflect more erratically, put a more subtle trailer on it uh, that has less drag. Um, what's up, Nate? Um, so, yeah, excited to try the – I played around with them a little bit, but excited to try these. I can definitely see myself trying these tomorrow. Uh, the Z-Man Chatterbait Trailer. You're talking about the – we they got a couple, like the Diesel Minnow. Is that what you're talking about, Derek? Um, the Razor Shad, I think they got a couple. Uh, or you're talking about just like the original Twin Tail OG Chatterbait Trailer. Yeah. So uh, the other thing you can do – uh, I've showed this in one of my other videos and you can just take a scissors and basically cut that right there off so it's like super flat at the end and that will also give you really good action on a, a bladed jig trailer so so that's a really good way to like extend the life of like Kitex and things like that if you like throw them on a jig head or on an EWG hook and you catch a couple of fish and they get kind of torn up then you trim the head and you trim the tail and put it on or save it and then put it on a bladed jig. Mauto Cowboys. Hmm. I think that's like a big double flapping thing, the cowboy, right? Yamamoto. That's like a big twin tail on diesel, big nasty thing. And that, those work. I mean, there are times when you want that big action and that flutter. It's a different profile. It's a different thing. All those things change the action of your bladed jigs. Um, it's just a matter of what the fish want. So, what's up, Chris? You ready, buddy, for everybody to come down to the river and join you this weekend, Chris? I know you're excited. Um, all right, so let's look at some other new baits. So, Reaction Innovations Machete Worm. Uh, I'm excited about these. So, these are basically like the speed worms. Um, they're a swimming worm. I can't get these things open but they got a little more rib to the body. And I'm just a big fan of Reaction Innovations. I feel pretty good. Uh, no, we're all coming down. We've just been taught, you missed it. We were all talking on the stream how we're all coming down the river. Straight Binkos are good on Chatterbaits. Yeah, so that's another good thing, right? Like you could tear up a Yum Binger or a Senko um, and it could maybe not be suitable for a, a Texas rig anymore, but you can trim it down and make it into a, a, a straight tail Bladed jig trailer. So these are kind of like the cutter worms or the speed worms with a little bit more bigger aggressive tail uh, and a rib body. So 
I'm excited to try these and actually try some. I did a little bit last year on Gunnersville, swim and worms. There was a lot of guys that had success in Gunnersville, Gunnersville, a grass lake. So I think up here on the river, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, anywhere where you got a lot of grass, you put like a eight, three sixteen ounce weight on these and just swim them super slow like a swim bait. And I think this could be something that could be new, uh, a new way to catch them. Almost like slow rolling a swim jig, but a little different profile, a lot more action. I think this could really be a good deal um, in Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah, that's the machete worm, Big Red. We just pulled these out. So there's the Reaction Innovations bag. We're just talking about some new tackle uh, that I've been stocking up. And getting ready. So I got these in Tramp Stamp which is one of my favorite colors, a black and blue and a green pumpkin laminate. And then uh, Oki Craw, which is a, a green pumpkin blue mixture. So these are almost, you'll notice that most of my worms only fall, or my plastics only fall into a few basic colors that I stick to. What, Chris, you call this uh, paycheck or is that what you call your jig that's black and blue and green pumpkin? One more thing from React Innovations that I'm pretty excited about, and I actually am stealing this idea or kind of a spin on this from uh, Alabama Bass Guy. I saw him on Small Most Crusher Street. And he talked about, I have the pocket rockets, but I never knew they had a baby pocket rock, four and a half inch. So he was talking about how you could take these down and bite them down and make them into a Ned worm. So if we want to compare this to like, Nedville that we showed earlier, size wise, it's a little bigger than that. But what he talked about is basically biting it down just a little bit so that that hook point would basically come out right in the, the little hinge point of the worm. So he basically would cut it down to about like that, put a net in there, and it would come out right in that little indent. And so it would give you the maximum amount of bite on your worm. Um, and then still have the action. So it's almost just like a beefed up Ned zone by the time you cut it down. And it's just got those, those patented uh, reaction innovations kind of uh, ridges on them that are kind of like reverse cut that just seem to move a lot of water and fish. I mean, obviously we've all caught a ton of fish on reaction innovations. So, um, so I definitely could see biting this down as a Ned, but I think just biting a quarter inch off and making that just a small jig worm, I think these things will be absolutely deadly on a jig worm uh, in Minnesota. What's up, Tom? Uh, so excited. I bought these in a whole bunch of colors. I got this Dirty Wizard, which is like this green pumpkin, purple. It's almost like Magic Cross Swirl, but more of a purple instead of a green pumpkin. Um, so I picked these up in a bunch of colors because I, I have a high confidence these will wreck uh, come summertime. So I got Tramp Stamp. And I got uh, 420, and we got some, uh, can't read that one. It's like a black and blue green, it's a different version of green pumpkin, black and blue. Um, watermelon red and sprayed grass. So I stocked up, up on these. What's up, Hanger? Are you all done uh, with your trip to the Ozarks? Or are you still hanging out in the Ozarks, Pat? Pat? Um, What's up, PK? Connor, where are you guys all going fishing uh, tomorrow? All right. I picked up a spool of this tour grade uh, braid. So I want to give it a try. I needed some light line uh, to put on some spinning rods anyways. And I really wanted to uh, try out some of the striking stuff. And I wanted to see their little, like, suction cup deal, right? Like, you can stick this to the side of your boat or whatever. Um and right, a spool line supposedly right off that. It's not really sticking to that. But I did see that like you can take this off, leaving in the AM for home, just in time for a weekend of fishing. Are you going for crappies or bass this weekend, Panger? So you can take their little suction cup off. So if you find that you like this and you want it, you can just buy like one spool of Strike King. <laughs> And then use this and keep this in your boat for all your spools. So there you go. I, I, really cool idea that they came up with to do that. So 
uh, I don't know. I, I give them the nod and innovations on that perspective that I will try one spool of their line. I think people have told me that Sunline make it for Strike King. Um, so I'll give, a, give one spool a shot. If it's good, I'll buy more. If not, at least I'll have a little suction cup for emergency spooling in the boat. So here's the Strike King 10 pound high vis braid. They do have a, a return postage. So if you want to recycle your line or the whatever, you can send it in instead of throwing it away, which is, which is nice. Kyle's not really a fan of Ned Fisherman, but he runs a Ned bag with a Gambler Fat Ace. Yeah, we call that a jig worm in Minnesota. Like that, we've been doing that forever. Just throwing a like a three sixteenth ounce, eighth ounce head with a regular hook, and throwing five six inch uh, senkos and other worms like that. Um, got one in a Mega Bass box, supposed to be Sunline Monster Bass. Ah, there you go. Cool. Um, other than that, I got some terminal tackle. I got a few packs of these Mustad tight necks. I like these for skipping wacky hooks and things like that. Probably not expecting that for a little bit. I've kicked up a bunch of these decoy snaps, these egg snaps, per the recommendations of Epa Eric. Uh, I got some bigger ones for glides and swim baits, and I've got some smaller ones for different size crankbaits. So stocking up on those. Um, I got a handful of different hooks. To start experimenting with um, the Jungle Gap owners, I've heard good things about. These look really good. So I'm just looking at different hooks that I can flip with. I'm not 100% happy with my life with strength check hooks. <clears throat> so I want to, to work on some of these. And I like the looks of the Jungle Gap because I'm targeting hooks, EWG hooks that have very specific features to them. And that is they don't line up with the hook eye. Right, there's a gap from that hook point to that eye that increases the hookups in my belief, and I think a lot of people's belief, that a lot of EWG hooks, that point runs right into that eye or tilts down, or so the fish has to like slide into the slot. Whereas this you can rig it and that eye is not going to be blocking uh when you hook up. So that's something I'm looking for in EWG hooks over the traditional ones, something that has that kind of slightly offset, um, and then obviously they're heavy enough. Also trying out this Hayabusa uh, 959 worm hook, similar concept, probably not quite as heavy as the jungle hook, but a pretty still a pretty strong hook. Um, there again, you can see it's slightly, they got about an eighth, maybe three sixteenths gap where it's sitting just above. It's not completely in line. And that's what I'm looking for a series of hooks that I can start experimenting with uh, to start hopefully hook it up a little more consistently. Another one that, uh, same thing with the G-Lock Gamagatsus. Epic Eric really likes these, but I find these are really, I feel small. I don't know if I got the wrong ones, but these four uh G-Locks are tiny, in my opinion. Like compared to the four aught Hayabusa, mm -hmm. Or the Borat Jungle Gap, they are tiny. Like, I don't know. So I don't know if these G locks just run small, uh, or what, or if I got the wrong ones. But Kyle, you're asking which one is that? Which one is which? Which, which one? What? 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 <laughs> are you talking about the Hayabusa or the Owner Jungle Wide Gaps? So we've got three hooks here that I'm trying. New experiments. We got Gamagatsu G lock. We got the Hayabusa. WRM 959, and then the 4108 Jungle Wide Gap Owner Hooks. So those are the three new hooks that I'm looking to try for hooking on beavers and things like that when I'm flipping grass um, that I ordered recently. Um, got some Dobbins Nikos. I like these. They're pretty cool, pretty cheap, 332nd ounce. Um, there's a lot of good ones out there. I also am going to try the missile baits, Nikos. So, um, I got these in a slight 16th, a slightly smaller weight. So these ones have a little bit unique shape. They both have a little bit different. Um, uh, this, these ones, I mean, I think people have said it before, but these ones basically look like tiny butt plugs. Not that I would know, but <laughs> compared to like the Dobbins ones, which are your more traditional 
nail spiked with a little bit of a uh, a weight on the end. So I think these will potentially work on slightly smaller worms. Um, you can get, but this has got a little more compact profile. It's got a little thinner, so they'll just insert into worms a little differently. Um, so yeah, I mean, but I don't know. I mean, what do you think it looks like? <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs> All right, so what else do we get from the big box? I think that's mostly it. Nothing else exciting in there. We got a couple, a couple more orders here. Oh man, that hooked the shot. All right, so other things, stocking up on a few things. I grabbed some 3.3 uh, inch Kytex in Smalley Magic from Omnia. Uh, I grabbed some of these for later in the year. Um, some punch bugs from striking. I'm kind of excited about these. These look pretty good too. Similar to those punch crowds that we looked at from X Zone. Like just that compact profile that you can get a good hook in, still enough bulk to hold a big flipping hook and move the water you want, but not catch a lot of grass. So excited about both of these when it comes to that no flipping season. Um, so that's some new stuff. I got those from Omnia as well. Uh, what else is in the Omnia box? We talked about Neds earlier. Uh, a couple of baits I like for Neds are the Hula Sticks and the TRD Ticklers. So they're kind of your traditional uh, Ned type baits, but they've got. Stuff back there we go and that's just i just to me again goes back to confidence having that little bit of action on the end of my ned gives me more confidence that i'm going to get bit because that just looks more natural and more appealing to me and i think it looks more appealing to the fish so from that perspective i just have more confidence with something with just a little something on that ned that's why i like that rounded tail on the ned bomb or on the the ned zone uh the little spade tail on the ned bomb a little tickling action on the Z ticklers. That's right. It's it's you know what? If it catches fish, it's for mutual pleasure, Chris, not just her. So, um, and then uh, then there's the hula stick, which is just a little bigger version of that. So if you want to upsize that a little bit, it's still pretty small. Definitely still a Ned class bait. These look pretty good on drop shots. They also work pretty good on Nico. Uh, so these baits are pretty versatile. These hula sticks and uh, TRD ticklers. So. Definitely, if you're looking to expand beyond the TRD, these are some pretty good options. Uh, another cool thing I got from uh, Omnia is this Kickin' Zayko. And I don't know if they make more than one size, but I didn't think they did. So these come, unlike the regular Zayko, come in a little tray to keep them straight. But these actually seem quite a bit smaller than the Zayko. Let me grab some Zaykos here. Um, So this is a new trailer from Yamamoto with a paddle tail on it. So it's a little shorter than the Zayko. Um, sim it's pretty much the same body, but just a little shorter. That paddle tail ends a little shorter than that fork tail. But this is the Kickin Zayko. It definitely has a smaller profile. It's about the same size, but it just, for whatever reason, is a slightly smaller profile. Um, so that's something interesting. I don't know if anybody else tried these. I could see where these could be really good on swim jigs. Also, could be. I know. I don't know what happened there. That was weird, uh, Troy. Um, if you like the Zaykos and you're looking for something that's more durable, um, check out these Arizona Custom AFG Force. They're about the same price as the Zayko, but I think they're ever so slightly more durable. They are pretty much. I mean, they're slightly different. But uh, they hold up on the hook. They're just a more durable plastic. So, uh, or if they're if they're out, 
on your online retailer or you can't find the color you want, try these. They're a, they're a good alternative to the, the Yamamoto. But surprisingly, they're not cheaper than the Yamamoto, which is a first for everything. So um, 21 guys on the YouTube. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, Fire Swim Jig Trail. You haven't tried it, but I imagine they'd be really good for sure, Parker. Um, so there, yeah, then we got uh, we'll just put those in the. Uh, so I got those at Omnia. Those came in recently. Um, I ordered a couple of Crush uh, 50 square bills, um, kind of a blue yolk color and a red. Uh, I don't know what the grass will be like in. The lake we're going tomorrow, but I might bring some square bills just in case. Uh, whether I throw these 50x crushes, whether I throw like the 75 six cents bait, which did really well in the river, or um, I might try something smaller like where is that other one? This little bluegill witty outdoors uh, crankbait. So we'll see. Um, lots of options tomorrow. It's like a brand new – Kyle, you jumped off the YouTube, and now you're on the Instagram. What's going on? Are you watching on both? Um, otherwise, I got some hooks. Oh, I got one more. I guess I picked up one more chartreuse sungill 50X as well. And then for later in the year, um, I got some of these hybrid VMC trebles, which I had no idea. They only came two per pack. <laughs> until I bought them. So I'm gonna have to if I like them, I have to get some more. I ordered some fours and some sixes. I'm thinking a couple things. I in my head, I think on uh, like a DT6 or something like that, where we have open water smallies. I think putting these on the front hook could be that little flash uh when you're fishing above them, right? You're often fishing your crankbaits above the smallies, anyways. It could be a way to draw them in. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Lunkers? For sure. Uh, ever use the ZO wire flipping hooks? I don't. Who makes those, Big Red? Um, and so that's what I'm thinking is like on smally waters, I think on jerk baits and like DT6s and DT10s, this could just be something that differentiate a little bit, especially when you're just swimming the crankbait over their head and they're coming up at it. It could be a good way to commit. I also think there's a chance that it could help a crankbait hunt a little bit. Like having that blade kind of like down there it could catch water and make crankbaits just do something slightly erratic, if that makes any sense. Um, so that's something we're going to experiment. I have no idea, but that's just a thought I had in my head. Cause I know there's a crankbait from Imikatsu out there called the wobble bat. And it's got a little blade kind of tucked on the back of the body. And that supposedly creates a hunting action. So why at some level, couldn't this work on a crankbait to create a little bit of an erratic action? Um, so uh, the other thing on uh, jerk baits, it could be a good way just to add a little weight on certain jerk baits um, to get them to suspend or a little flash. I think uh, super strong owner hook is supposed to be the deal. Okay, cool. Um, and then I think jerk baits. So I'm excited. So like whitefish and vermilion when we're fishing smallies this year, I'm definitely thinking these bladed troubles could be something to try to give myself a little edge. And then, well, let's see, two more things here. Uh, I got a couple original Tokyo rigs to try. Uh, I made some of my own last year. I want to try some actual ones to see if that's going to make any difference um, on how they perform. And if I'm going to make some more, at least I can copy the originals versus just going off a picture. But going to give these a whirl um see if that that welded hook makes it run any cleaner and then the other two things uh, on top of those i guess those other hooks i was using is well i guess got a couple more things in here is the the ringed wide gap from vmc so it's their basic wide gap but it has a little welded ring on the top that you tie to so instead of tying to the hook you're tying to the welded ring um, I'll take these out because these are going in the terminal box. But so basically, you've got a little ring that you tie to. So the, the thought there is that that hook, when you tie to it, it's going to give it free movement. So uh, it's almost like when you put this on a Texas rig, it's almost like you get the freedom of a wobble head. 
on a Texas rig. And I know, and the VMC has a pretty good, right? It's the gap there, right? That's that gap we're looking for. Again, it's not in line with the hook. There's a slight gap. So that's another trait. But I know from what I've heard is Seth has gone to this mostly for slipping rather than straight shank. So um, we're just going to give it a try. I got these in some three aughts and some four aughts. And then I also got the finesse Nico hooks uh, for like basically as an alternative to the cover shot hook. I want to give these a try for Texas rigged drop shots. Um, so that's mainly what I bought this spring. I feel like that was actually pretty good. I didn't go too crazy this year. It was a lot of stuff, but um, that's about all I have. So what other people, what do you guys think? What else is new? What did you guys buy? What are you guys planning to use this weekend to, uh, to catch them? Parker, are you going out to Tonka tomorrow? What's your plan? <laughs> what other kind of questions do you guys got? What's up, CS Fishing? Uh, see. You guys are all so quiet. We talked about all the new tackle. Um, but I really feel like Tomorrow, it'll be all about that Oki Craw 3 8 ounce jig tomorrow. I really think this is uh, going to be – I think most people is way too heavy a hook. Landing percentage goes way up with a lighter hook. To some degree, that is true. I think it really depends on the application, uh, Lunkers. Um, uh, it really depends. Yeah, if you're for nest fishing – if you're fishing with straight fluoro on a worm, like a lot of those techniques, you are better with a lighter hook. So I think it really is about not necessarily lighter hooks, but matching the application to the thickness of your hook. If you're flipping heavy cover, uh, one ounce weights, 60 pound pound braid, you need a pretty heavy hook, you know, uh, whether it's a jig or a straight shank or an EWG, you want a pretty strong hook. Uh, but yeah, if you're, you know, fishing finesse, you're fishing just Texas rigged worms. Uh, you really want to balance it. You got to think what's the rod reel set up and what am I doing? And it should match. That's the key. If you're going super heavy, then you want a big gauge hook because you're trying to, to force it home. If you're not, then you want something lighter that you can penetrate with your system and keep it pig, pegged. But absolutely, the bigger the gauge hook, the bigger the hole you're putting in their mouth. So the more chance that that barb's not going to catch. So it's, it's something to think about. Chris wants to know why he's been out of the game. What's with a $16 chatterbait today? Um, I don't know. It's the, the jackhammer definitely is a good bait and it, it's, it, it runs good. It starts really fast. Um, not saying you can't catch them on the original. It definitely has a superior hook to some of the original, uh, bladed jigs. Z man kind of has the market on that to some degree because of the patent stuff. So, outside of the small little guys that are just doing small runs and stuff, they've got um, the market on it. So they can kind of mark what they want. Uh, but it does have high quality components. It's got a good hook. It's got a good split ring. It's got a really nice blade on it. Um, a hand tied skirt, I think. So there's just a lot of components that go into that bladed jig that drive up the cross. Plus it's an evergreen that's licensed by Z-Man. So I think everybody's got to get their cut on that. That's probably mostly why it's a $16 chatterbait. So, and it catches them. I mean, there's no doubt that. So, uh, and people are willing to pay it. So that's why it's $16. The hybrid vibe from Nate's custom baits, uh, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard you say that before. Is, is that a direct connect blade or is there a split ring in there? I've also heard this something, uh, the Finch nasty that, uh, what's the guy's name from Lake Fork? Um, can't think of his name elite pro that's got a ringed connection and he claims that to be really good. And I've heard people say the Finch nasty is a really good bladed jig. Um, what is the, uh, what's the deal on the hybrid vibe by Nate's custom? Yeah. It's just all those comp components add up as somebody that sells jigs through retail. Uh, you need your margin. The vendor needs their margin. Everybody gets the margin. So, when you just put premium components, even though it may only add 10 or 15 cents to that jig, it ends up adding like over a dollar in net cost by the time it goes through the wholesale chain. Uh, 
Yeah, and the jackhammers are investment. Honestly, I don't lose very many of them. I a couple ever. I mean, occasionally a pike catches you the wrong way. Uh, occasionally you sink them in a deep brush where you can't get them out. But I mean, typically you're fishing them on 17, 15, 17, 20 pound fluoro or braid. And you just don't lose that many, honestly. So um, yeah, it, it doesn't bother me. Um, but I'm also a guy that likes to throw mega bass trip baits. So um, <laughs> now it does like hurt when you're stocking up because like when you buy five check, uh, bladed jigs and they cost you almost a hundred bucks, that's, uh, you know, bladed jig boxes. So for Chris, who's asking about the bladed jig and why the jackhammer is good, make sure we find one. I have a trailer on it. Like I said, it is the evergreen originally, so that is part of the reason. Where is my... That's the Thunder Cricket. There is... That's not the right one. But if you want to save some money, um, one that I like a lot is the Z-Man Custom. It has some really good components on it. Um, so what you get on the Jackhammer, one, uh, you get a high-quality snap on it instead of that twisted tie. The hook is better. Um, you've got that double, you've got the barb, right? You've got a double double barb keeper on it. Can't really see that there. And you've got, uh, it's tied under the band. So you have a double wire keeper there. Uh, it's a really good hook, chrome, nickel. I think it's a, I hope it's a Gamagatsu or an owner hook. Uh, they got a better paint job on the head. Um, just the whole, it's a solidly built bait and it just starts really good. That blade is a little unique to some of their other ones, um, which gets them to kick and start really fast. Um, and that's what you want when you, when you throw it in and you make that first turn, um, that's the key. Um, and you have that direct connection. All right, we'll start the IG again here. <clears throat> but I missed the first part of the stream. You've been catching them good up there lately. Uh, honestly, I've only been fishing a little bit. Uh, Lunkers, tomorrow Minnesota has the opening of the catch and release bass season. So this is when we really start to go at them really hard. So uh, hopefully uh, watch my IG story tomorrow. Uh, watch for YouTube later this week. There should be some... Uh, some evidence and hopefully it goes down. It's usually pretty good this time of year. You never know. That's why we call it fishing and not catching. But uh, expect to, uh, to to lay the wood to some tomorrow. What's up, Gaff? Where are you going tomorrow? Where, where are you fishing, bud? And Kyle, I was just about to read your comment when it ended. What were you saying about the Nates as whether it's a ring or a direct connect? Because I missed that. So please repeat that in the chat because I just was trying to read it and it went away. And then, yeah, a lot of the... the uh, the jackhammers have plated blades. Like this is an actual green pumpkin blade with green and black dots on it. So, um, Creek fishermen starting to eat good. No plans for tomorrow. What's up with that, bud? What are you doing? Are you like planting a garden or what's going on? How about you, Tom Rodriguez? Where are you going fishing tomorrow? Are you going to keep going to Wisconsin or are you going to stay in the motherland? Something cooking for next week, like big swim bait stuff. You missed it. I was showing off my uh, my new bait sanity uh, bait that I purchased. Forest Lake, so staying close to home for Tom. Perhaps. Is that it has a split ring but has a silicone skirt and bucktail? Okay, so the blade connection has a split ring. Um, also, a bucktail. So it's a combination of hair and skirt. Hmm. Yeah. So that's the bait sanity antidote glide. <clears throat> For reference, next to the Arashi. Um, similar length, 
a little narrower. And it squeaks like in my hand. Like, I don't know if that's a thing. It's like almost like a squeaky buzz bait, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to put the hooks on this just in case I get the, the, uh, the itch to throw this tomorrow. Thursday through Sunday, fishing. Nice. So you're going up to the – heading up north next weekend is what you're saying. Nice. Yeah, I think I'll get a pretty decent day in tomorrow. I'm going to get up reasonably early and probably fish till I don't know, 3 o'clock and get home for dinner. But uh, so should be good. I think uh, would – Probably will be pissed if we don't catch some four or five pounders, to be honest, tomorrow. I mean, like, that's – am I in? I'm going uh, with, with Batterman down south of the cities tomorrow. What's up, May Mom? <clears throat> so what else do you guys want to talk about? I kind of showed you all my new baits. If you guys want to see the stuff I bought and you came late, you can watch a replay of the stream on IG or on YouTube. Um Otherwise, we're just chatting about what's going on this weekend and what people are doing. Um, lots of cool stuff. I mean, I gotta probably have to get off the stream not too late because I need to put all this tackle away, and I don't think you guys want to watch me sort tackle and get my rods ready for tomorrow. Um, but that's what's new. It's super awkward, you know, I have a guess, you know, I mean, thing, like, did I get my engine fixed? I have not got my engine fixed. That's why I'm jumping in somebody else's boat. I'm still trying to figure out that process because I really don't feel like I want to invest in my 2005 EFI. So uh, I feel like what's going to have to be spent on it uh, is worth more than the motor. So I'm looking at other options. Yeah. So I'm going to hop in somebody else's boat. I was going to go by myself, but uh, I got a better offer. Uh, I was going to go to a small lake by my house that really wouldn't be a big deal if I just idled or used my trolling motor. What rod am I throwing the Arashi on? I haven't figured that out yet. I've got a um, couple options. I have the Dobbins Champion 795 rod, uh, which would handle it great. Um, that's probably the best rod. Otherwise, I've got some of my bigger flipping sticks that I might try it on. Can't. I did call Cam. I left him a message today. I haven't heard back from him. Um, can't catch him on the S waiver 168. Hmm. Where are you, Troy? Like what part of the country? What's your water temp? How long have you been trying it? Uh, give me more information on that S waiver and why, why, where are you not catching them? You fish all that raccoon much? You must be talking about somebody else. Um, yeah, I like that rod. Uh, for a lot of things. The only thing is I, I wish I had more than one because now I was like, do I want to throw my big paddle tail on that or do I want to throw my glide bait on that? So that's why I'm probably going to be rotating in some of the flipping sticks so I can be doing more than one swim bait at a time and not have to retie all that time. So so Troy, if you give me a little more information, I mean, a lot of people are pretty successful in that S waiver. So um be interesting to hear what part of the country you're in and what your uh, Ohio, like the Ohio River, like lakes in Ohio, Great Lakes, Smallies, Largies. It's all parts of the puzzles to help figure out the S waiver. Because um, the S waiver is not much bigger than a big size jerkbait. It's got a little more mass to it, but it's not that big. Um, and small fish will eat this. Are you? I would say get around fish <laughs> that you know and then throw this um, uh, green for sure tomorrow. Going south of the cities. Uh, so no, it won't be any brown. I did get invited to go up to Mille Lacs, but I had to turn them down. Yeah, it's going to be 30 pretty early, but I think it's going to get into the mid-40s pretty quick. So I'm not going to let that uh, mess with my mind too much. I don't. I think they'll bite tomorrow. Gibby. <laughs> What's my Ned setup? Um, 702, uh, Dobbins Champion, Dobbins Fury, Dobbins Sierra, any of those work good, but a 702. Um, and then I throw that on like 10 to 12 pound braid. 
uh, with like an eight pound floral leader, like a six to 10 foot leader. Um, and then I'm going to throw, um, yeah, you know, I'm going to probably throw the heck out of my bass tech net heads that I just, uh, just got in. Um, but yeah, and set the drag reasonably light on that net head. Um, not a net expert, but that's what I've caught most of my fish on. 31 degrees does not scare me at all. No, uh, it's, it's not going to be that cold for that long and the sun's going to pop out and it's going to warm up. So, um, I think early in the morning, it's really going to depend. Cause I don't think it's going to be cold enough. It was reasonably warm today. It was like 51 and sunny. It's going to dip down a little bit tonight, but then come back pretty quick. We're going to have a little bit of sun in the morning. It's not going to be super windy. So I don't think it's going to affect the water temp that much. So, um, I, I think they're going to bite tomorrow. Um, my go-to tomorrow, I really think is like, especially if that, if, if that cold does put them a little tight to cover, uh, I think the lake that we're going to end up going to has got a fair amount of docks and wood on it and pad stems and things like that. I mean, like when in doubt, I'm going to be flipping this three, eight ounce bass tech jig, like the watercolor, you know, black, blue, green pumpkin. I'm going to throw this Oki crop. This needs to be retied before I throw it. It's all chewed up, but and I'll probably put a menace scrub or a speed crop or something like that on there and uh, soak that around. And then I can swim. The nice thing about a jig is I can swim it. So I can pitch it into docks and wood and, uh, and drag it on rocks and I can swim it. I can cover all the water columns and really figure out what the fish want. So uh, I probably will throw the jig a lot tomorrow until I at least figure out what the fish are doing. Then I probably might experiment with some swim baits and, and other things like that. I'll probably also throw a, a bladed jig a little bit to cover some water. Um, those are probably the things that I really lean on uh, until I find them. Will they stay on beds? If they're on beds already, I think they'll stay on beds. I don't think it's that cold. Um, yeah, some people like the S-Wave on overcast days, but most guys say you need some sun. So kind of depends on what school of thought you are. Um, last second, oh, some baits, some baits, lipless. Lipless could be good. It really depends on the lake you're going to and how cold the water is. I think where I'm going, the water is going to be on the upper 50s. So I think them fish are going to be getting on cover, getting close to where they want to go. So um but it could be a jerk bait, it could be a lipless crank, it could be a bladed jig. Uh, would you recommend the Colt? Thinking about getting a 734 for buzz baits. 100% I would get a Colt for throwing buzz baits. You do not need a fancy rod to throw buzz baits. Um, that 734 is one of the, I have not fished it myself, but I've heard really good things that that 734, specifically in the Colt lineup, is one of the better action rods. Um, and I, th I throw it on braided line, that's how I throw my buzz baits. Um, you're going to see every fish that hits it. Uh, so why spend the big money to throw a, uh, a buzz bait on a GLX or a, a, a champion or a, a champion extreme? Um, I would, I would definitely wouldn't go any higher than a fury to throw a buzz bait or a top water. So large mouth lakes, clear to light colored water. Yeah, that sounds like good stuff for the S waiver 168. I guess just experiment with cadences. I would say throw it on 17 to 20, 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, and you're just kind of looking for that kind of like, I guess you get to work on that cadence of getting it to, I'm not an expert how to explain that. Maybe somebody else in the chat could explain like the cadence of a glide bait and what you really need to do with a uh, an S waiver. Ever throw a fluke in cooler water? A fluke's always good. Um, especially like, so if those, scenario this time of year when a fluke can be really good is if you've got grass leading into where you think them fish want to go uh inside weed lines you can throw that fluke weedless or with a tiny little like 16 30 second ounce uh bullet sinker or a weighted hook and just let it fall weightless um that's a great presentation for those staging fish um that maybe aren't quite locked on but they're cruising that fluke or a weightless stickworm is a great option uh big red so three quarter turns is what, uh, what Eric says. So like you want to just like not full turns, but three quarter turns and just a little pause, let it kind of, that's what you're looking for out of a glide bait. So try that. Um, and just mix it up, try different things until you see what the fish want. Um, 
yeah, three quarter turn pause, three quarter turn repeat, shorter, bigger cranks will make it swing out further. So sometimes you may just want like more like quicker. So it's just kind of this. And other turns you want to bigger cranks, bigger pauses to get it to go wider. Divines on the back of your spinners. Had luck with that. Like you're talking about divine swim baits from six cents. I don't have any, um, but I like other paddle tails for sure. Yeah, you got to get experiment. Every lake is different. Every day is different. It's just like a jerk bait. Some days it's like a fast cadence, like you want to bang that thing. Other days you want bigger pauses. You want to mix it up, see what the fish are doing. The glide bait is really no different than a jerk bait as far as like figuring out that cadence. Yeah, it's a giant jerk bait. That's a good way to think about it for sure. What's up, Trevor? Oh. So yeah, I mean, uh, I'm gonna. I will have the GoPros going tomorrow. So I do plan on trying to film something to have some stuff for YouTube this week. So if you're curious, um, my predictions and my uh, my ideas come true, probably Tuesday or Wednesday for sure. Uh, there'll be a video up on that, and then uh, I do plan. This is kind of a bonus stream, but I do plan to stream on YouTube every week, 7:30 p.m. Um, that's just gonna be a consistent thing. I'm gonna. I want to talk to other YouTubers. I want to talk to other anglers. I want to talk to like bait makers. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'll get uh, Eric on. We can talk swim baits one night. He's got uh, a, a, a passion for swim baits and a lot more knowledge than I have. So, uh, would you want to come on and, and talk swim baits sometime? Uh, he brings up a good point. Uh, try working your swim baits uphill, not just always casting towards the bank, but cast across points so your swim bait's coming uphill or quartering out so your bait's coming in and what that does uh at least the theory behind it is fish like to ambush things they like to pin their prey against the surface against the bottom against the dock against wood so if you're fishing deep to shallow right the bottom's getting further away from your bait which means it's opening up uh if you're coming shallow to deep basically that it's funneling the bait in and the fish can feel like it can trap it better. So sometimes that's going to get you more baits and that, that is really true for anything, but specifically swim baits, it's a key deal to fish a bait uphill. Uh, and it just, it, it, it creates that instinct that the fish as a predator on a big meal feels like I've got a better chance to get it if I can corner it and fishing it uphill, uphill makes it feel like they're cornering it. All right, I'll definitely hit you up and get you on the schedule. We'll figure out when we can do that. So next week is Tin Horse Monty, who is another uh, angler and YouTuber out of like Illinois, Ozark area. Um, but I'll start filling it up after that. So what's up, uh, Water Nice? Where are you going tomorrow? What's what's your plans? Are you, you, you going out filming tomorrow? What's up, Bream Slide? Is that a uh, is that a, uh, a glide bait as well, Big Red? Pete, yeah, Pete, where are you going tomorrow? So hopefully that helps you, Troy. Like hopefully, like slide into my DMs, like tag me, let me know if you if you get your first one on a 168 or your first good one, and uh, these tips help you. I want to hear about it for sure. I'll leave a comment on a video or something. Let me know how that that goes. You're not, uh, you're not going to tell me where you're going to fish tomorrow, Pete? <sighs> hey, what's up, FL? So, Eric, do you know what an evergreen uh, bream slide is? Is that, a, is that a glide bait as well? It's just sago. Figure out if the bass bite is crap. I have some good crappie spots, too. See how the cold front affects them. Well, slow typer. That's understandable. Yeah, I used to love, when I lived the north side of the cities, I loved fishing Sasago, especially in the fall. Uh, I haven't fished in a little while, but it's always been a pretty darn good lake. Um, so, and it used to have some janes in it. I hope it's, I assume it still does. Um, it's a bluegill slide, very realistic floats out of the box, but you can weigh it. Nice. He says it's a bluegill glide, very realistic floats out of the box. You can weigh it at different depths. I have an idea. Let's pull it up. What do we think? Let's jump on Tackle Warehouse. Be patient with me. Pull this up on the old streamer. All right. Let's see here. Dun, dun, dun. Home tab. 
All right. All right. You won't be able to see this on Instagram, but we are going to find this evergreen. It is Evergreen International Brief, $69.99. It's a deal if you're comparing it to the Roman made. Um, that's a good looking bait. It's, it's, you're going to have to, you probably should Google it right now. It looks pretty sick. Uh, it looks a little bit like the, uh, I forget what's it, the gantrel. Uh, it's got those hooks with like the feathers on them. And it's got all kinds of different dark side brim, farm pond brim, natural brim, wild brim. That thing looks fire for sure. What's up, Josh? Yeah, that's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to show you. Let's, let's just, yeah, we'll show you my screen here just so you can see it. Like, Look at those colors on that. Uh, let's show the people on Insta quick. That thing looks uh, pretty sick. No reviews yet. So if you catch them, Big Red, you better be throwing some Tackle Warehouse uh, reviews on that uh, that bad boy. And uh, let me know. Let Leave me a comment or send me a message if you uh, how it works. It does look sweet. Uh, Minnesota, going out tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to go head south of the cities, uh, hit up some lakes down by Faribault and see how it goes. There's usually some big ones down there. Um, he said it was a floater out of the box, but it's pretty easy to wait, it sounds like, to get it to do different things, whether you want it to glide or sink. Um, so, Tom Mix, got my first s waver today. It's not my first glide bait. I started with an Arashi. I've had a few followers and a couple swipes at the Arashi, still figuring glides out a little. Yeah, it's slippery slope. Uh, once you have some action on it, it's a ton of fun, but figuring that out, uh, is fun time. Yeah. We were just showing, I don't know if you were on earlier, but I was showing off. Uh, so I have had the Arashi or the 168s for a while. Um, I've got a couple of those. I've actually got one of the bigger ones back here. I have not thrown this unless maybe I have one in my box too, but there's the, the bigger, uh, S waiver 200. Um, but then uh, we were showing off. There's my uh, Arashi that I just picked up. So I started with the S waiver, and then got the Arashi, and then we also added the the Bait Sanity Antidote Glide to the mix. So those would be some of the things that we're going to be looking at. Yeah, I've always thought the bluegill baits look really good, but I know one thing that Matt Allen says is that sometimes the hookups aren't great on bluegill baits. They're not as easy to hook up or keep fish staying pinned. Uh, these aren't exactly glide baits, but I used to throw some of these bigger true dunks, true tungsten uh, hard swim baits back, and they were a double joint, more of a swimmer, or actually they're triple joint. Um, so not, but this little guy, this is a fish, this shell cracker is a legit fish catcher. Um, so I used to throw some of the big true tungsten baits a little bit. Um, Braver than I am passing too cold and windy. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I've been chomping on the bit way too long. I don't think it's going to be that cold. Like, I think it'll be a little nippy in the morning, but I think it's going to warm up pretty decent. I'm not, uh, yeah, bass fishing is a slippery slope, Tom. That's for sure. Like, I'm trying to get better at that, but uh, ABT Suicide Glide. I haven't tried that one yet. That sounds pretty sick. Um, hookup tackle as bream slides for 50. Nice. So there you go. Bait junkies, that bream slide that's 70 at Attack Warehouse is only 50 at the hookup right now, it sounds like. Yeah, thanks, sluggers. That's uh, that's what happens when you get into the, the fishing scene for too long. You start uh, the bait addiction. The bait monkey gets on your back and it won't go. It's too cold here in Ohio, 52 tomorrow. That's not too cold. We live in Minnesota. <laughs> Don't tell me about cold. I went out on Black Friday, uh, and we uh, we whacked them, and it was like snowing that day. We got low thirty, yep, yeah, low thirties. It's gonna warm up to forty five by like eight nine o'clock. That ain't no thing. Just dress in layers, put your rain gear on, put some socks on. You'll be stripping down by the afternoon, and if you're catching them, you won't know it's cold. Trust me.
I mean, it works in the fall, it works in the spring. Them fish want to eat. It's not going to be 30 mile an hour wind tomorrow. Not in the morning. Not in the forecast I looked at. Unless you live in a different part of the state. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'll get off the lake before it stops. Start snoring. Uh, storming. You fish when you can. Sunday's Mother's Day. That's not an option for me. So tomorrow I'm going fishing. Hell or high water. It didn't say where I live. It said uh, rain wasn't going to roll in until like three, four in the afternoon. Are there any tackle warehouse sales coming up? I don't know. I know they are pretty swamped at tackle warehouse. Um, and I don't think they want to have sales because they can't barely keep up because with the social distancing, they are running with a skeleton crew to get orders out and get stuff done. And they can't bring in more people to process more orders. So I don't think they're incentivized to do more sales because they can't hardly keep up with what they got. But uh, if you look down in the description on my YouTube channel, I've got a code for 15% off at omniafishing.com and it's rich linger in 15 uh, and save you 15% off at Omnia fishing. So if that helps you Southwest Ohio fishing, check out Omnia fishing, use code rich linger in 15, all caps and save 15%. So there you go. My battery is getting low. So Instagram is going to come to an end in not too long. So if I disappear and you want to hang with me, jump over to YouTube. Yeah. That's the other thing is like, Tackle Warehouse, it's taking almost a week to get their stuff out, and I don't blame them. I'm not knocking on them. Uh, if my orders from Omnia have shipped same day or next day. So, uh, and they uh, they have cheap shipping. They got good stuff. They're adding stuff all the time. Uh, so definitely check out one of my videos, uh, description, and uh, that's got all the links to it. Yeah, Bass Fishing Deal Hunters Facebook group. Go ahead and uh, look that up. We'll accept you, and uh, we'll post some of those deals and codes there as well. So, so that uh, hopefully that helps you out looking for deals. There you go. Switch to Geico and save fifteen percent. That also works. <laughs> Great deals until the stimulus checks went out. Funny how that works, huh? Hella bass or high water. I like that. I might have to trademark that, Kyle. Well, there. Look at that, Gaff. What's up, bud? Nice. Yeah, Dan. All the guys at Omni are good dudes, honestly. I don't think any of them are bad dudes. So, I mean, not to say that Tech Warehouse is a bunch of cool dudes, too, if you ever have to work with those guys. So, um, mostly people that are in fishing are pretty good dudes. So, um, I mean, tackle warehouse isn't gonna, isn't gonna, gonna die if, if you buy a few things at a few other places. And I think if you want competition in the market, uh, you know, check out some of the other shops. There's a lot of good shops out there. So don't, uh, don't get tunnel vision when you're shopping for tackle. There's a lot of good places to buy tackle. Yeah. Hellabaster high water, maybe a visor. Maybe some shorts, Hellabaster high water. Get like some biffle shorts and say Hellabaster high water on them. That could be a. Who would want those? We want to do it. We can start a pre-order right now. All right. Well, I'm gonna shut down the Instagram here because my battery's just about dead. Thanks, everybody. We'll hang on YouTube for a few more minutes. Thanks to everybody that hung out there. So what's, uh, any other questions? What's going on? Oh, you know, hanging out, thinking about getting out for tomorrow for a little while. You've got inspired me. There you go. That's right. It's not going to be that bad. We're from Minnesota. Take a t-shirt. I feel like it should be sleeveless. What do you think? <laughs> Like a custom setup where I cut the sleeves off your t-shirt for you and cut the top of your head off. Now, wife beater, that could be sick. Swim bait excursion at a roadside stop. 
You got you got a juicy uh, pond or lake that you can hit up with swim baits that you've had success, Eric. I've caught a few swim bait fish on on a ponds. Uh, that actually is not a bad thing. Like if you fish pressured ponds, and then fish see a ton of spinner baits and senkos <clears throat> and jigs and all the traditional stuff, you wouldn't think this, but you show them a big swim bait and they've never seen it before. It's a good way to find the biggest fish in the pond and get bit. I don't know if you need that from me, but if you if I pan the camera on, you may not think that big red. But uh, I do have some stuff I'm working on from a tackle perspective. If you do go back and look, uh, I have a walkthrough of my Pantera bass boat from like July or August on my YouTube channel. And I actually do a kind of a high-level glimpse into my tackle organization and what I do in my boat. <clears throat> so that's definitely worth checking out. But I didn't mean that. I use a fair amount. We can talk a little bit about it now. I've got some deeper Plano style boxes for swim baits. Um, I keep my hard baits in one. I keep my soft baits in another one. Um, I mean, most of my stuff is hard bait boxes for my hard baits, whether that's <coughs> swim jigs, jigs, you know, jerk baits, crank baits. I'm not a big fan of like space. I just I cram stuff in there. I mean, I just pack them tight. I'm not afraid to untangle hooks when I take something out. <clears throat> I mean, like, there's my shallow crankbait box. I mean, it's jammed full of baits. Um, I did get one of these lure lock boxes for my high-end baits, like my fancy balsas. Like, I figured, like, I got my Method Crakes and my WECs and a few other, like, good baits. Like, I figured, you know what? Those baits are expensive. They're rare. Might as well take care of those ones. So, I was willing to splurge a little bit and uh, and keep those baits from rattling around. But that's just a small box niche niche thing. Um, for my small stuff, I've got a series of these little tackle boxes. <clears throat> so I've got like a Ned Head box. I've got a hook box. I've got. I did switch to this lure lock this year for my tungsten just because I figured there's so much weight in there. It's a strong box. Um, and then I just have these little trays, these little plastic tubs in my boat or in my, in my locker. And then these things just sit vertically. So I've got two of those trays and I've got a Nico box. I've got a drop shot box. I've got a Ned box. I've got a swim bait head box, a hook box, a weight box, a miscellaneous box. Uh, and they just slot in there. Uh, and it's easy to find what terminal I need. And then if I'm jumping in somebody else's boat, I'm going smallie fishing. I grab my Neds, my drop shot, my my tube box, right? If I'm going largemouth fishing, I bring my tungsten weights, my hooks, a few things. Like you can kind of isolate, <clears throat> uh, yeah, that K-Pink's in there. Um, so that's what I do with my terminal tackle at a high level. I just keep those little kind of small boxes. Uh, and then for soft plastics, I've got, if you can see these up here, this is like my bulk storage. So like all of those are like sorted by, uh, drop shot worms, finesse worms, beavers, craws, swim baits, stuff that I use. I got some stuff on pegs. But then in the boat, I've got just Ziploc bags that are markered. Like So this is grubs and swim jigs. I've got uh, another one for like weighted jig trailers. I've got one for jig trailers. I've got one for drop shot. And then I just kind of sort things out uh like that that's kind of majority of my system so i've got plano boxes for my hard stuff uh, i do put my kitex in a plano box because i hate keeping those clamshells <clears throat> but almost all my other soft plastics just go in ziploc bags sorted by type um and then i've got kind of a day bag that is uh, where is it Listen. Oh, let me grab one of those so this is this is what those trays look like in my boat. This is just this little plastic tote that I just came across somewhere. Uh, I drilled some holes in the bottom just in case it ever gets wet. But then these things just sit in there, and I think I can get like I don't know, six of them in here. And so I got two of those, and I got twelve of these little modular boxes. And that's all my terminal, and then. Where's my bag? Oh, it's over 
then I've got this bag, which serves two purposes. It's just kind of a, it's a shoulder strap bag uh, that's got multiple pouches in it. Uh, I can use this for shore fishing. I can use it as my co-angler bag. And I basically put like, or I use it as my day bag in a boat. So I'll grab what I think I'm gonna use in a tournament, what I think I'm gonna use for that fishing. Like, so I'll, I won't bring all those baggies of fish when I jump in the other guy's boat tomorrow. I'll just grab what I think I'm gonna use, put it in here. I'll put a scissors in here, a clippers, uh, some scents, some markers, uh, a few things. I'll grab a couple hard boxes, a couple of my terminal boxes, and uh, I'll be good to go for tomorrow. That's kind of how I pack out organization-wise. Loosely called organization. I, I'm uh, I'm okay with uh, controlled chaos in the boat. I don't I don't have to be like freaky neat. It doesn't uh, doesn't bother me. Um, yeah, old school man. That uh, that old do sign up there. That's a vintage sign for sure. It's pretty cool. Uh, the Moosehead beer sign. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually a mirror too. <clears throat> Canadian Lager. I don't know. Do they still make Moosehead? I'm not sure. So that's kind of a rundown on my tackle organization, or lack thereof. Um, so yeah, like there's my jig box. It's got some skirts. It's got some heads. Uh, some jigs that are like ready to go. It's got a few rattles in there. I keep a lot of the jigs that I use, like my bass tech jigs, all come in these little flat plastic, and I can just keep them in there, which is nice. So it keeps them nice and fresh in the box until I need them. But otherwise, there's a bunch of loose jigs in there, kind of sorted by color. I don't carry a, a ton of colors. Like for me, it's Oki Craw, Black Blue, uh, some more natural stuff. I don't get into real crazy color combinations. Like those colors catch them just about anywhere. Like a lot of my slow fishing is a version of Black and Blue or Green Pumpkin with some kind of metal flake in um, that's true with my jigs. That's true with my soft plastics, um, crankbaits, same thing. You got some chartreuses, you got some shads, you got some crawdads that, uh, top water, as long as it's bone, that's all you need <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and then the swim bait stuff, I don't know, like I'm still learning about that. So I got my little, my Nico sleeves. So that's, uh, that's what's up. I think I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, let's see what kind of knot to use when tying your on the fly. Oh, like in the boat, just regular, um, two knots. I use the polymer and I use the San Diego, double San Diego jam knot. Um, so the polymer knot for my reaction baits and for my flipping baits, I tell the, the double J San Diego jam knot. My swim baits consist mostly of hollow bodies like bass tricks and skin dippers. And those served well for many years. Me. Yeah, for sure. Those, those are good baits for sure. Yeah. So, Hey, thanks for the questions guys. Uh, thanks for sharing and liking. If you missed the beginning of this, make sure you, you, uh, <coughs> you come back and watch the replay. I'm going to sign off. 90 minutes is usually a good amount of streaming. Um, not going to go for a marathon. And uh, so thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe. Uh, and there'll be more content coming. Watch for a, a fishing video next week. And we're going to call it a night. I'm going to get my stuff together so I can go fishing tomorrow. So help you uh, suck less, catch more bass. <laughs>